Hey guys, I finished up my Brizza uh, Kepart knife, so I wanted to show it to you guys. I used uh, curly birch wood and some green liners that I already had. I purchased this at uh, Scandinavian, uh, Thompson Scandinavian Knife Supply. Um, he's got all kinds of really cool blades, handles, materials that you need for your knives. Um, I forgot all of the the uh, pins, the Corby bolts, and the lanyard holes, so I had to supply all that stuff from locally here, which I already had the pins, and finding tubing is very hard in your local area. So find uh, Ace Hardware if you have one, because they do have them. Some of them, not all of them. But anyways, I think it turned out really nice. I used True Oil um, to shine my handles. Uh, it's gunstock oil. You can get a wax for it too. Turns out pretty good. It's got a really grippy, um, soft feel to it as it hardens. Um, it just gets this very like warm feel to it. Easy to hold on to. Really like the way that it turns out. It's a nice look. Some people don't like it, but I, I like it. It's pretty cool. Um, the knife, really awesome. Uh, the edge, kind of wonky when you get it. I had to change the angle on it. Um, I noticed that when people do videos, they have a hard time with this knife. It's because the, the, the handles that Brizza sends this thing with are half the size. I mean, they're like, they go like an oval type shape. They stay a little bit thick in the back still, but as they come to the front, they get really, really low. And there's just nothing to hold on to up front at all. I, I just, I can't stand that. I do like to have a little bit of dip right here, depending on what kind of knife it is, but this locks in really good. I really love it. Um, I kept kind of a square broomstick so it's got a roundness to it yet it's square and so it fits into your fingers and it just you know I got extra large hands and so it just locks in I love it I can get my fingers on there and lock in that grip I notice when people are cutting with this in their videos um, a lot of people are having time a hard time feather sticking um, the angle is just really aggressive and the knife does come with a, a recurve in it because they don't put a sharpening choil. So the, I, I put my own choil in there and you can see the recurve still. And it just, it makes the sharpening really hard for when you get up close. It wasn't hitting at all. So when I got done with the knife, it was still dull in that spot. And so I was like, I'm going to put in a sharpening choil and just put one in myself. And uh, you can do that with, uh, with a... Uh, what is it? The sharpeners that are for serrated blades. Take a look here. Somewhere. For those that don't know, uh, you can take these these little uh, diamond sharpening blades for doing your serrated blades, and you can make your own sharpening choil. But what you want to do is tape the nut that blade up really good and only leave that one little spot because if you slip or whatever, you're gonna damage your blade and have to fix it. So just tape the blade up really good, leave that tiny little, that little spot right in there. And then you can just make your own. I just made a tiny little one. I could have made it bigger, but the way that that edge is right there, I think it'll work its way out and it'll be fine once, once I sharpen it a few times. And, strop it up but honestly I don't care it cuts really good and I was gonna do a convex on it but I'm just gonna I just did a V grind and it slowly convex out with stropping but now I got a twin to my uh, Nordic knife design who used to be part of Enzo Brizza the owner started his own business so you can go to Thompson Scandinavian knife supply and pick this blade up I think for like 39 bucks or something and then this one was I think around the same price really has some awesome blades on his on his site I mean, he's got all the wood that you need all the parts you need it's just it's really cool um the sheath i got for this one was that bps sheath but the sheath that comes with this is that square it's kind of like a puko sheath in a way because the way that it swallows the knife um if it was smaller it would be great but i made myself a big knife handle which is really hard for this sheath so i'll show you guys here in a second whoops i'm bumping you guys Show you in a second how that fits before I end the video. Show this with the uh, Kephart Ontario. So if you have one, I'll let you know how small that is. I and mean, that is just tiny. 
it's a little blade. It's very maneuverable. The tip is a little bit more round instead of pointy. I really like it. It's going to be fun for carving. I love using a cap heart for carving and whittling. And full flat grinds work pretty good for whittling. I actually have fun with them. Once you get used to them, if you're really used to a Scandi, it's hard to get used to, but give it time, guys. Try it out. Same size as the Garberg. Nice wide handle. I love it. I love being able to make my own handles. And I think companies that are paying attention to that right now are the ones that are going to be doing the best. You got uh, Work Tough Gear making some really awesome handles on their knives. It's so important. I, I think it's like the number one important thing to put a great handle on your knife. Something that people can hold on to and manipulate. I mean, when you watch videos and see people struggling with a knife because of the handle, it just it's sad. I know this blade is really awesome, but you have to change the grind on it, and it it'll carve so much better for you, even with your smaller handle. But this the, the, having a bigger handle, it just just works. It's just so much better. So do some shavings. Uh, people were having a hard time uh, doing feather sticks with the knife because the grind that it comes with is like it's something that you'd put on like a big old chopping knife or something I think, that, I think it was like probably 28 degrees or something it was just, mine was just gnarly and it really slices wood good guys it just is a very slicey knife I like using the nose. This stuff is way soft. I like using the nose of that knife. It takes off the bark really good. The cap parts, once you get used to them, they work really good, but it's the handle. It's the handle where you get all that control from. And I think a lot of times people are fighting with doing woodwork because the handles suck on a lot of blades. I mean, they just put horrible skinny handles on everything. And you got to have a good grip to do woodwork, especially if you're working with harder woods, which I try not to do. I mean, you're going to have fun with a knife whittling wood. Might as well find something that's easier to carve with. If you're uh, trying to learn how to do feathers, just try to find some good soft wood. Avoid the hard stuff until you get better at it. And make sure it has a good grain structure and not a lot of knots. But yeah, this knife will get funner. I haven't got to work the edge a whole lot. Um, the more that I strop it over time. It'll get a little bit better convexing. But yeah, it works great. When you have a good handle like that, that's square, you can really push in. It holds the wood. It locks the blade in because you have strength to get that to get that grind down into the wood. And this is some hard wood. Look at that. Full flats are nice, but if you got a really junky handle on there it just it's really hard to control yeah it notches awesome great little knife guys it's fun it's fun to build your own knife if you can I live in an apartment or a fourplex it's not easy I have to take all my stuff luckily I have a, a place that I can work at but I have to take my stuff outside to do my work the sanding all that um, I keep my drill my drill press in my house and I just make a little station and I, I, I do all my knife stuff like that you can do it uh, I know people are like well I don't have the space for it I, I know there's some places you don't but it, you can do it you can do it guys it's, it's it's not that hard and if you do have the space for it come on get, get the stuff for it and do it it's so much fun uh, it, you'll just there's a really awesome satisfaction to getting your handle done doing your first knife I mean I've been doing this for years but when, when I first started doing it it felt so good when you when you get a good knife done and you, and you finish it and it's something that you're proud of fits in your hand it locks in nice and good it's it's just something it's a good hobby and it's something to 
put your mind on and stuff and not be focusing on negative stuff that's going on in the world. But anyways, guys, check out uh, Thompson Scandinavian Knife Supply and get yourself some blades there and all the stuff that you need and give it a try. So anyways, guys, we'll see you next time. Oh, wait. I had to show you the sheath. Forgot about that. This thing fits super snug. Because this handle is big, so... And plus, it's I just finished the handle, so it's a little bit tacky. That's the way that true oil is. So I have to keep pushing this thing in. It's still not even in all the way. It's right there at the end now. So that's the way that it fits. So I'm going to leave that in overnight. And let it sit. And it'll form. And then pretty soon this will just pop in and out nice and easy. But I think this will make a really good neck knife. And uh, any way that you want to do it, I'll probably get a dangler for it for my hip. But yeah, pretty cool. I like this one. I kind of like having this too. You can loop spring through there, some paracord or whatever. But probably put like something on here to where I can put a fire still on there or something. But anyways, guys, take it easy. God bless.